seminar. This is our sixth seminar. I welcome you all once again. Uh, before we begin, I would request Sarah Therese Anthony, House Vice Captain Barton House, to kindly lead in prayer. Yes. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Abba, Father, we thank you for blessing us with a new day, Lord. We thank you for our families, for our food, and we thank you for protecting us thus far, Lord. We thank you for blessing us with every good thing in our life. We thank you, Lord, for gathering us here today, Lord. I'm so sorry for every wrongdoing. We pray for your blood to protect us, Lord. We lift everyone in this meeting into your hands, Abba, Father. We pray that you protect us and our families, Lord, with your hedge of the hedge of your, your blood protection, Lord. We pray for the protection of Psalm 91 and Psalm 121 over our lives, Lord. We pray that you bless us abundantly, Lord. <clears throat> Lord, we pray that you guide us into the right path, Lord. We pray that we can we will be able to save more souls and heal more men for your kingdom and that, our, that we use our talents for your glory, Lord. Keep us as the apple of your eye and hide us under the shadow of your wings. We thank you for listening to our prayer, Abba. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, over to Mr. Isaac. Everyone. Everybody there? Yes. Yes, good to hear you. Good to see all of you. And I hope you are doing well. The kids been a little bit time that we met. So let's do a quick uh, debrief. Okay. So you remember the first law that we looked at? Who can say what it was? Do you remember? Too far back, is it? This is only the sixth session. So it was the law of solid ground. Right? So we said trust is the foundation of leadership. What about the second one? Do you remember the second one? The law of priorities. Yes, thank you, Preeti. She put it in the yes, Ben, thank you. Law of priorities, the title itself speaks much. Okay, so we said being focused on a vision leads to success. Right. What about the third one? The law of lids, yes. The leadership lid that we tend to pose on ourselves. Okay, there is a lid or limit on our potential that is determined by our leadership ability. Okay, and so as we practice leadership and extend our leadership abilities, we grow in our ability to impact the world, right? And if we stagnate as leaders, so does our ability. We may be still doing the mundane stuff, but, you know, growth may be slow. Thank you. What about the next one, the law of... Law of process. Process. Thank you, Hepsiba. Thank you. Law of process. You know what did what did we learn in that? Okay, the process, the word itself explains much. Some of us are in a hurry to do things and we do it the way we want it. Okay, the process involves a plan. Okay, and sticking to that plan, step-by-step -step plan. 
Okay, so I'm just giving you simple definitions. What would the next one be? That was the last session we had. The last time we lot met. navigation. Ah, that is a lot more fresh in your mind. So what did we understand through that session? You told that anybody can stir a ship, but it takes a leader to chart the course. Okay, so okay. So seeing where they want to go and charting the most effective course to get them. Excellent. Good. Keep brushing it up. Okay. And as you apply these principles, you will see the results. Not today, not tomorrow, but then you'll be inculcating and developing into mature leaders. Right? So today we are focusing, focusing on the law of the inner circle. Let me see if I can put the presentation up there. Okay, can you see the presentation? Is it visible? Not yet, sir. Okay. Oh, yeah, I need to. Yes. Yes, now we can see. Okay, great. The law of the inner circle. So it states that those closest to us will determine our potential as a leader. Those closest to us. Okay, that means they should be people who have our best interest at heart. And they want to see us succeed and able to hold us accountable. Right now, you may think, of course, John Maxwell's book writes a lot about people in the industry, leading organizations, and so on. But I, I, I've kind of, even as I read it and have benefited from it and have applied it, you know, I realized that just applying those principles matters so much. So, do you have people who are close to you? people who care for you, right? Someone said, you are the average of the five people whom you most often associate with. Okay? There's another one, right? Very often used and we all know it. Show me your friends and I will show you your future. So this is referring to that inner circle, the, the few people who are close to you and whom you relate to, okay? Those who, are, who have the best interest for you and who want to see you succeed. So our strength as leaders comes only partially from what we know, knowledge. Yes, knowledge is important, right? You have some of the best educated person, but they not, need not necessarily be good leaders. But while that is important, we are not kind of uh, saying knowledge isn't important, knowledge is important, but we're also saying that it depends on the skills of those who are in our inner circle and how closely we are connected to each other in that circle. Okay, it was Mother Teresa, right? All of us know of her. And she said, you can do what I can't do. I can do what you can't do. Together, we can do great things. Okay, so actually your role as a prefect or vice prefect or, you know, class monitor, whatever roles you may be playing, and uh, house captain and so on. It's an opportunity for you to learn the value of the inner circle, okay? Leadership, uh, leadership can be lonely, 
don't forget that. Okay, because uh, there's a tendency for us to also focus on what we need to get done. Therefore, we do tend to get isolated. Then people tend to look up to us. And now all these things happen and uh, it can cause you to become really isolated and set apart. So what do we do? Okay, let me pull this thing out. So let's take a look at this very important uh, topic that we are looking at today. Let me move to the next slide. Are you able to see the slides or have I removed it? Oh, we can't see the slides. So. You can't see. Okay, let me try to put it back there again. Let me do another attempt. <clears throat> Sorry about that slide delay. There, I've got it. What about it? Do you see it now? Yes. Okay. Great. <clears throat> So forming your inner circle. Now, the first thing for you to ask yourself is, do they display exemplary character in everything they do? <clears throat> okay, what do we mean by that? Let's take a little more detailed look at that. So the people you hang out with, right? What kind of a person is he or she? Okay, take a moment and write down what are the qualities you expect in those around you, okay? It can be an ideal that you have in mind. So put it down, put it down. All of you. Okay, have you got it? What have you written? What are some things that come to your mind? Go ahead. Granville? Uh, sir, I think honesty is quite important. One, okay. What about the others? Loyalty. Sir? Yes, Nihal? Loyalty, sir. Loyalty, okay. Go ahead. So good communication. Okay, communication. Look at, look at qualities from within first. Okay, inner qualities, yes. Then we look at the outside, outer qualities. Honesty, Positive. yes. Pardon? Positive. Positivity, okay, thank you. Alan, okay. Trust. Trust, got it. Yes. 
Supportive. Supportive, yes. Go on. Good stuff. They, they correct your mistakes uh, truly without trying to flatter you. Mm, right. Being honest, correcting your mistake, and not just being, you know, throwing flattery at you. Yes, very important. Sometimes students or friends do that. They pep you up, right? And you end up doing things you're not supposed to. Okay, what are the qualities? A few more. What about Sarah, Priya Ranjan? Do you have any to share with us? So it's connected to the previous one, straightforwardness, being down. Straightforward, being straightforward, okay. Link to honesty, yes. Okay, take this example, you know, months before uh, President Obama took the oath of office, you know, he began assembling an inner circle of advisors. And that's what they do, right? They create a team and there they sit together and identify the strongest leaders who will become a part of that inner circle. Because just like all the words you use, right? Trustworthiness, straightforwardness, correction, and so on, all that matters. And a leader's potential is determined by those who are closest to him or her. So what are the kind of people you're hanging out with? Okay. And if you consider the prefix and your whole leadership team as one big family, right? Are you all influencing each other positively? Or is there, you know, negativism around you? Are you pulling down each other? Are you competing in such a manner that there's no opportunity for you to learn and grow? So past presidents have learned the hard way that failures of a leader's trusted advisors can bring disaster. And most recently we saw in the American election what happened, right? And there was a lack of trust between the president and his chosen few. Okay, and very often, uh, you know, I mean, you also notice that when it came to a crisis, many of them who stood by their principles, right, also had to speak openly to the president and he didn't like it. Okay, so we see these kind of examples, you know, quite often when we think of displaying exemplary character. So choose your friends properly. Okay, let's see what the next point is. Do they bring complimentary gifts to the table? Yes, it's true that sometimes some of you with like-mindedness or similar interests, you hang out together. <clears throat> If some of you like sports, even amongst your leadership, you may be together, okay? Talking about it and discussing, even playing together, right? But apart from that, how do you all complement each other? Some of you have good people skills, right? Some of you communicate well. Some of you are able to mobilize students well, okay? With all this, some of you are very good at juggling time and maintaining, you know, a disciplined time schedule and staying on top of, you know, academics and other activities. So, and I'm sure from a distance, you look at them and you admire them, right? While that is good, get to know them. And some of you seniors, students who are, yes, of course, very busy, 
Don't show an attitude and push the little ones off, even on your leadership team. Yeah, you feel big, right? If ah, I am this person, so I'm not going to give you time types. But I want to encourage you. Learn to embrace those around you and be a model so that others can benefit, you know, by knowing you. And that's very important. Because imbalance within an inner circle can, you know, can attune a leader to only one side of the argument. Sometimes in leadership, we don't like those who oppose our views. And it happens all the time in many circles. And we read a lot about it in the political world and sometimes in the business world. What about you young students? Right? So find diversity in, even in your inner circle. Find diversity, different kinds of personalities, different perspectives. That's what enriches you. Okay? Because that's how you widen the range of your vision and the breadth of your influence. Wouldn't you like to do that? Yes. <clears throat> so when you look at this opportunity, you don't want to miss it. You want to grow. You want to learn. Okay, what do they hold a strategic position and have influence within the organization? Some people talk a lot, but have no influence whatsoever. Right? And of course, when you apply this in, in uh, you know, in the working world, it definitely makes a lot of, uh, you know, interest and influence. But apply it. Apply it in your team, within your team. Apply it. Right? As leaders, are you encouraging young ones with potential? Right? When you look at the world of sports, you see a lot of that happening. Right? Apart from all the politics that happens, but there is, there is. With the selection process, they do try to bring in, you know, those who are younger and have you know, more variety of abilities and so on, because they want to, to, to take the best. So, you know, sometimes high performers amongst you may not want to hang out with those who are less motivated or not so talented. But I want to encourage you because while you may have a certain kind of skill, the younger one may be very different. They may be street smart. They may have skills that you have not seen. And unless you get exposed to it, how will you learn? Okay, so look for people who are able to strategically, you know, learn from each other. Then do they add value to the team and to the leaders? Sometimes just hanging around people who are honest and simple and humble, it rubs off positively on you. Now, those kind of people you need in the inner circle. Sometimes it's not all talent that makes a difference. It's not all about communication. There are some who are absolutely quiet, but can move and shake the world around them. Okay, so what value do you add or the person you choose or you're choosing to be a part of your inner circle? What kind of value do they add? Okay, so articulate clearly what is the value they bring. And that's why young people, even though this may sound far-fetched or you may say, I'm not at that stage, but I want you to dream and imagine. And these are the kind of people I'm going to hang out with. So I remember as a young student, you know, while in college, and uh, I was the president of a local, you know, youth ministry chapter. 
And some of those, the advisors of our group would be working people, and they happen to work around where my college was situated, okay, at St. Joseph's. And uh, it was interesting because I would make time to go meet them during lunch break or other times after college, while all my other friends were probably sitting and chatting and you know spending time joking around, I would slip away after lunch and try to meet these people, discuss some issues, or just sit there opposite them, you know, across their desk. And it was a very different kind of experience. Of course, things have become more complex these days, but you know, just seeing the value they can add to you. I remember one of them was a graphic designer and he didn't, you know, he wasn't very far from where my college was. So I would meet him. I built a relationship with him. Okay, another person was, you know, accounts in charge in another organization, not very far again. So these are people, you know, and I had another friend who was at that time working in India today. And so entering these offices, meeting these people, it gave me a glimpse of their world. And in a way, these were, you know, though older to me, they were my inner circle. They were my mentors, so to speak. And they gave me a lot of, uh, they encouraged me in different ways and kind of helped me. So what kind of people do you want to include in your inner circle? What are you learning from those around you? Right? And let's see, what's the fifth one? Do they positively impact other members of the inner circle? Okay. You know, some have a natural flair to share their lives with others, even students. Okay. So make sure you find the right people for your inner circle. Okay, so list out some qualities. Take a few minutes. Okay, let's see if you can write down five qualities. Okay, think carefully. You may write 10 and then strike out five that are not so important. But what is it that is important to you? What is it that will shape you? What is it that will make you a leader, okay, that you want to be? Quickly, write it down. Once you're done, you may put it in the chat box. Yes, others will see it, but that'll be a good exercise. So um, the chat box is still uh, not open for like to everyone. Okay. You can send it to you directly, but... Um... Yeah, Anjana ma'am will look into that. Meanwhile, you're all right. Thank you, Grandpa. They'll do something about it. So that was Akash. It's done, it's done. It's done, okay. You'll write it down. So let me look at the chat box. So if you put the five with a comma next to it, so it'll come as one message. You can put one, two, three, four, five, one after the other.
Okay, and try to put it in the order of your preference, okay? The best ones first, see if you can do that, order of priority. Sarah, can you put them all together? Because yes, by, by the time you put the second one, someone else may put another message there. So yes, I'd like to see you. all together. Yeah, thanks. Yes, sir. So one of you has put how an introvert can complement an extrovert. Excellent. Because sometimes extroverts are so outgoing, they may ignore introverts around them. Okay? So embrace some of them in your own inner circle because you can learn a lot about being quiet from introverts. Okay, you don't have to be chatting all the time. Silence yourself. Introverts are quite, uh, pers their perceptions are different. They, they may read, they may prefer quietness and so on. Joanna says discretion, honesty, trust, empathy, integrity, yes. Go ahead, taking time to come. Yes. Yeah, see how quickly you can add to this. Okay, open-minded, positive, fun, giving, trusting, communicative, informative, patient, positive, honest. Yes. Thank you. That's around four or five of you have written. Good, thank you, Hepsiba. Okay, giving opportunity to those who may not be talented. Honesty, yes, most of you are writing honesty. Okay, patience, complimentary, creative. Works well under pressure, yes, a lot to learn from each other that way, supportive. Bubbly, yes, someone said fun, optimistic, fairness, yes. Pre-planned, yes, assertive, yes, straightforward. Helpfulness, thank you. Good, good, yes. Yes, please write, all of you write, because I want you to think, think through these. Because the writing exercise helps you to actually internalize some of these. Okay. And hopefully you're writing it in your book too. Okay. Write it in your own book first and then put it out here. Guidance, considerate. Yes, we need each other's guidance. Some younger ones can be really wise in warning the older ones in some decision. Yes. Hardworking. Okay, I'm just reading random ones from each. Yes, yes, sympathetic, honest, help others, communication, voraciousness, interesting, optimistic, imaginative, frank and fair. Thank you. Considerate, trustworthy. Yes. Notice many of you have said helpful, optimistic, right? Encourager, trustworthy, yes, thank you. Wonderful, this is really good. Good at giving advice, discipline, yes. Maybe this is the only one that a person who's written, yes, very important. Sometimes if you are indisciplined, you can learn from a disciplined person, okay? Disciplined people can sometimes uh, frustrate a undisciplined person, but then hang out with them. You learn a lot, learn a lot. Motivated, yes, respectful. Wise, advisor, trust, influencer, informative. Okay, statistical, Jedediah writes. Informative in brackets, okay. Grateful, someone with gratitude, flexible, empathy, 
Wow. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. That's good. That's really good. And I hope you're sending it to everyone and not just to me. Okay? Now, as you keep writing, don't stop. As you keep writing, keep track of this. Okay, one assignment for you. We just have one more session to go, but doesn't matter. Do a word study of these great words that you've written. Do a word study on each of them. Write a brief para. See what it says to you. Does it appeal? Is it what it appears to be? Okay, would you do that? Give me a thumbs up. And if you're still excited, put the word excited in the chat box. Okay, great. I see a lot of hands going up and uh, thank you. Very good. Very good. Yes, great, great, good, excited. All of you are still excited. Very good. Very good. That's 24 pass participants raise their hand out of 62. Not bad. More coming in, I'm sure. Yes. Okay. If you're near the phone or you're near your laptop, go ahead. Do it. Very interesting. Exciting to see that all of you are listening and involved. Great. Okay. So you're going to do a Try to do a word study of each of these words, okay? And this is something you can learn from each other. If you had an opportunity to just, you know, ask the other person, what did you mean by the word encourager? So your inner circle can become that much more richer. And I wanna encourage you, even as young as you are, if you learn to trust one another, and if you learn to respect one another at this stage, oh, it's going to go a long way. And the reason we have so much of hassle around us in the workplace and, you know, sometimes when you go further, uh, go for further studies and as adults, as we interact, sometimes there's so much of misunderstanding because we don't have, we don't value each other. So start that process now. Yes, you will come across people who are mean to you, who may bully you or disrespect you, but don't give up, right? You may feel you don't match up to the others, but don't give up. If the other person is unkind and you continue to be kind, you will see that is leadership, that is influence, not your position, but it's how you influence people around you. Okay, are you with me? Good. Good. So let's uh, go to the next slide. So sometimes, you know, the two common errors that we can do in constructing the inner circle, right? One is Soliciting praise instead of criticism. Okay. So sometimes we like to hang around people who praise us. And I liked one of you, you know, when you mentioned that choose people who are honest with you. In fact, many of you said honest. And those who will give a very right appraisal of you and not flatter you. It's easy to flatter and buy friends, literally. But remember, very soon your game will be up because they know that you're not being honest, but that you're flattering them. Of course, guys may not sense it, but girls will sense it quicker than the guys do. But be aware of this because, you know, very often we, you know, we end up playing to the tunes of others, right? And uh, that can be a little dangerous. So it's important that we, okay, I'm gonna push this slide here so that you can see it. 
Uh, is the screen visible now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Great. Okay. So, stacking an inner circle with people who just say yes to you or flatter you and constantly praise you, I mean, it may help, but it's not necessarily something that will go down well when you think of the long term because it restricts your perspective. Any criticism exposes you to the blind spots in you. Okay, and uh, be sure, you know, that your inner circle is willing to speak up. In fact, if you want an inner circle, you should be willing to take the words of what they all have to say to you. And if you keep quelling any kind of dissension or disagreement, and if you keep pushing it down, You'll, see, you'll soon find yourself left out, all alone in the cold, and no one will be there around for you because they know that you don't respect their words. So don't just choose only those who solicit praise. Second thing is, don't drive away talent so that your power isn't threatened. Okay. So a rising star may, may feel threatened with talented people around him or her. Because if, so, if you're so used to being praised and all that, soon you just want only those who will pat you back. So, so you end up hanging around only with those who you feel are on par with you. Now that can mean, you know, your own, you know, it's like digging your own grave. And we have many such examples, you know, we see in the Bible people, you know, men of God who did not seek the advice of others. King David, for example, okay? He had his own, I mean, way of doing things. So he ended up, you know, committing adultery, you know, committing murder and so on. Okay. What happened? Mr. Isaac got uh, disconnected? Yeah, he seems to be. I'm back on my phone. Suddenly my laptop died on me. Okay. <laughs> but no problem. While it's uh, booting up. So, so David. Okay. Right, we see in his life that he he made some wrong choices because he thought he was the ultimate leader and nobody could find fault with him. So he schemed and he brought down shame on himself. Okay, give me one second. So I'll get the presentation up on again. Yeah. Mm. 
Mm. Okay, uh, I'm not able to show it yet. The Zoom is not open, but I will keep talking. Okay, so if you look at Second Samuel, the book of Second Samuel, uh, uh, I've made you the co-host, uh, Jacob. Hello. I made you the co-host. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. The yeah. Have you joined on another device? Trying to. Give me one minute. Um, so I guess you muted. Excuse me. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, Hello. Can you hear me now? Yes. I've unmuted yes, myself. Sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Sorry about all this. So when you look at King David's life, you see very clearly that you know he did not seek the advice of the right people at the right time. He had some amazing prophets around him, but you know it took them to come and remind him that he's done wrong. Then we see another king, Rehoboam. Okay, and in his case, it is very clear he consulted the wrong inner circle. Okay. He rejected the advisors of the elders, or the, what the elders gave him, and consulted the younger men who had grown up with him and who were serving him. So he arrogantly increased the burden on the people. Okay, he said, my father scourged you with whips. I will scourge you with scorpions. Okay, so you notice that it was very obvious he chose men who were very different from him in the inner circle. Here's another one, King Uzziah. Okay, he had great military success, but after he became powerful, his pride led to his downfall. We see that in Second Chronicles. And he attempted stuff that was prohibited, very clearly told to him that he should not be doing it. And, uh, but instead he raged against those who confronted him. But soon we see his health failed and his son took charge of the government. Pride can cause leader to overlook the limitations and that all of us human have, okay? And uh, that's why a trusted inner circle can be a great one to warn us. And as I look back at my own life, and I'm sure many others do too on this call, you'll notice that heeding the voice of that inner circle, people you trust, having people you trust, you know, can make a huge difference. There were many others we see, you know, uh, who went through. Joshua was the other one. 
a very young king who took over from a leader who took over from Moses. Okay, but he went ahead and made a peace, peace treaty with the Gibeonites. And these people pretended to be from a distant country. Right? At times, you know, when we take the advice of the inner circle, we may, we will get that discernment that our own judgment failed to show us. And that's so important. And uh, without sufficient investigation, without asking the Lord, you know, and without uh, looking to his inner circle and the right advice, you know, soon he found himself in a dilemma. Okay, and so a leader, uh, if you're not the type who goes for facts, but if you have an inner circle who's focused on facts and getting the things right, that can save you a lot of trouble. Now, flawed leaders are there everywhere around us. You and I can also fail in many ways. Okay, but these, demo these uh, examples demonstrate to us that greed, Pride and misplaced trust can lead to disaster, okay? And not only that, having the wrong advisors, incomplete facts, and short-term thinking can prove disastrous to all of us. And, uh, you know, we see that clearly recorded in the history. So um, I want you to take a minute, you know, now to write down five areas in your life, five areas, you wrote five values or qualities you would like to have in people in the inner circle. Okay, and interestingly that those five may reflect who you are as a person, right? Now you write five qualities that you think you should be wary of in your life. Five qualities that you think that can pull you down. Please write them down. Okay? Don't overlook anything. This is just for you, right? So don't be embarrassed to write it down. Okay, this is important. Here you have to be absolutely honest. So try. You don't have to put it in the chat box, right? Now, these five qualities, and, I'm, and I want you to write them again in the order of priority, and you may find some of them constantly, you know, sticking up its ugly face when you relate to others. Okay, take, for example, dishonesty. I know we all want honest people around us, but sometimes we are not honest, okay? The way we relate to each other. Maybe at times we, we push ourselves and cheat on an assignment, okay? And these ugly little heads can show up when you least expect it. So as you write them down, Ask yourself, what can you do to avoid these from showing up? Because leadership is not all about standing on stage. It's who you are in the dark. Someone said character is who you are in the dark. When others are watching, yes, we are at our best. And you look at all these men we talked about, right? These leaders in the Bible, 
and they are recorded there as a warning for us. And it says very clearly in the Bible that those who walked in the right way were successful. Okay, have you written those five? Is it a grim picture of yourself? Do we tend to lie? Do we take shortcuts to complete tasks that are given to us months beforehand? Okay, do we copy assignments and not uh, you know, cite where we took it from? So notice some of these things that we can fall trapped to are those we do behind people's back. And these are more dangerous. Okay, these can destroy you more than even the great things you do in front of people. Okay, so let's, let's take a moment and uh, look at these two lists. One is the kind of people you want to hang around with. These may very well be the kind of things that you can become. Okay, so let those first five thoughts be your own pursuit this coming year. You have a few more months in your leadership role. So, you know, if you strengthen these five positive things, you will soon find you don't have time for those five negative ones. Because most of you have written the word honesty in it. And the word honesty is enough to outweigh every other wrong quality you can think of. Okay? So that is the law of the inner circle for you. Okay? Because if you remember what Mother Teresa said, right? I can do what you can't do. You can do what I can't do. But together we can do great things. Okay? So there are 50, let's say 50, student leaders out here. You will have several small inner circles. And by the way, the others need not know who's on your inner circle. There may be overlaps. They don't need to know. Maybe there are people you pray with, a prayer partner. Okay, someone who gives you, you know, academic advice. You're stuck with maths and then, you know, one of the leader knows much better or is better at maths, so you take their help. So your relationship can be wide and deep and can make a difference to each of you. Okay, and I should tell you, even at my age, okay, I have an inner circle, right? None of them are friends on my business or in my ministry circle, but they are leaders from outside of my circle. And you want to know something? For last four years, we've met. Okay, every month we meet once. Why do I need that? Because I can fail as a leader. And the more we listen to each other, we are all trying our best, you know, to become not only like each other, to become more like what Christ has asked us to be. So I'm, it's exciting that you've embarked on a journey like this. Don't worry if you fail here and there. Seek forgiveness and move on. That's how beautiful our relationship with God can be. Okay? So God bless you, and I'll stop here. Uh, over to Ms. Anjana. <clears throat> Sir, that was a beautiful session. You helped us to find out who are the people and the qualities we want to hang around with. And also you gave us time to peep into our own selves. Thank you. Thanks once again. Welcome. And now I would request uh, Rushir K, Prefect, Redwood House, to lead us and close in prayer. Let's pray. But Jesus, we thank you for the successful seminar that was held today. Thank you, Lord, for giving us this wonderful opportunity of learning from Mr. Jacob Isaac. 
Lord, please help us to apply and use all that we have learned from today's seminar and become a better version of ourselves, a better leader who will leave a mark and inspire others to do their best. Keep us safe today, Lord. May what we have learned impact our lives. In your heavenly and precious name we pray, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you once again.